Hello friend, today we are here on the topic design of the riveted joint. As you know, we have the two different types of joints, permanent and temporary. Temporary will be become the assemble and disassemble as per our requirement. But the permanent will be never become assemble and disassemble as per our requirement. So the best example of the permanent joint is your rivet joint. If you having a look on this diagram of rivet, we have divided into the three types, three parts. First is the head, second is the shank, shank is the intermediate body. And the last one is your tail. The maximum pressure is imposed on the tail and this is going to give you the close tightness which make it joint as a permanent joint. Now dear, what is a riveted joint? It is a permanent joint used to join two sheets by the using of the rivet as we have seen the rivet here. And now they are going to be bifurcated into the two different types of joints. First is your lap joint, second is your butt joint. Suppose I have an example. I have a two duster. I am placing one duster on another duster and I have provided the rivet joint. This sort of joint, when the one part is put on the another part, that is known as my dear friend, lap joint. But if I want to be placed in the parallel zone, must I have to give an another seat to this and now I have to provide a two different rivet. This type of joint is known as butt joint. Now dear, uh, before uh, moving on the design and failure, we have to be a terminology using the rivet joint. We have the seats, we have the assembly. The different rivets are provided here. The center distance between two rivets is always known as pitch, denoted by a small p here. If we are going for the row wise, the consecutive distance between the two rivet center is known as back pitch. If you are going in the zigzag manner, for the row and successively in manner that is known as PD. PD is stand for diagonal pitch. My dear friend, always remember we have to always give a small, a small distance between the rivet end of the rivet and the last edge. Last edge because if you are not going to provide the distance, it is going to be make the tear out from that surface because the force is applying that is going to be make a tear and crushing phenomena should be there. So, so these uh, we have the four terminology: small p, PB. PD and small m is your margin. Now if you are fo focusing here, we have the empirical relation between them. A small pitch is always considered as the three times of diameter of the rivet hole. Whereas if you are talking about the PV back pitch, it is taking the two different value for the two different conditions. Condition one for the chain when we are in the parallel zone. In that case, the value of the PV is taken as a 0.8 time of pitch. If you are going in the zigzag manner, then my dear friend, the value of PV is equal to 0.6 time of P, pitch. Now, what is the margin? As I told you, for the safety concern, we always having a, the, the, that rivet should be having a, some a means maximum distance from the edges. And that, that distance should be always in the multiple of the diameter. So the margin is always considered more and equal to the 1.5 time of small d. The small d is your diameter of the rivet hole. Now dear, we are talking about the failure of the rivet hole. We are talking about the failure. We have the four different uh, parameters there which we have to consider it. First is your tearing of the plate at the edge. I have making the diagram here. The, the diagram is there. We have the provided here the two rivet. What happened? The distance is not greater than 2.5 D. Then suddenly if you are applying the force, I am applying the force here, there is a tearing or will take place. So in order to avoid that, we have only one condition, the amp should be always greater than 1.5 D. Second, what happened? The distance between two rivet center is your pitch. And when we know the center, this half and this half will be going to become the one diameter of the rivet. So what happened? P minus half of half of D means P minus D should be always give you the tearing of the plate across the row. When you are, I would ask him about the across the row of the two rivet. I have the two rivet. This is going to be failure. Sometimes it is also going to be failure like this. When the two hole is going to bring in like this. So in order to avoid that, we have here the another four that is your PT. PT is sent for the difference of these two means P minus D into which force is applied here. That is a tensile stress. So we have here PT equal to P minus D into sigma T. So this is your tearing. Fourth, now dear, we are going for the searing of the rivet. Sometimes the searing action is also taking place, which is always going to take place across the hole. As we know that we have the single searing, we have the double searing. For that, the searing phenomena totally depend on the number of rivet which we have provided here. So I am using a one more term, n. n is the number of rivet. 
PS sharing is equal to N into area pi by 4 d square into tau. This is for the single shear. If you are going for the double shear, the N should be multiplied with twice of area into tau. This is for the double shear. Now dear after that, the N is your number of rivet as I told you. Now the next is your crossing of rivet. For the crossing of rivet, what happened? The diameter, whatever the hole is, whenever you are applying the force, the diamond, diameter and the dimension of the hole is going to be a rivet and change. On behalf of that, yeah, there is some material loss, loss will be take place. The force is taking against it. The area under the crossing is always going for the D into T, where T is the thickness and D is the diameter of the rivet. But if you are taking the whole area, then the PCR, is equal to n n is the number of rivet into d into t now d what is the crossing resistance crossing we know that force is equal to stress equal to force upon area force is itself is known as resistance so the crossing strength is equal to n d t into sigma c r where sigma c r is a crossing strength so dear one thing remember always that the for the same design the crossing load should be less than the applied load now sometimes they are asking about the efficiency of the rivet joint the least value of all the forces pt ps and pcr is divided by the the that force we don't have any riveted so this will give you the maximum efficiency of the rivet that's all are from the design of the rivet thank you very much for your support thank you